阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。Mr. Yu, Mr. Jingyi Yu or Yu Jingyi, who met the um, kitchen god. That's the title of this chronicle. Yeah, it's actually a chronicle. He said Ji, as in like a like a like a diary. He write a diary of his experience uh, uh, happened to him, and this is actually an experience happened to him. We already know like kitchen god in our. Chinese culture has such a huge significance. Ancient Chinese culture, in modern times, is still widely practiced uh, by a lot of uh, Chinese, but uh, it gets lesser. Obviously, um, people do not um, start to depart from the uh, the age of gods and all that. But it still has significance in our education, uh, moral education, because uh, kitchen god represents some sort of like. Um, Protectors in, in a way that uh, it, it, it it record it treat it it teaches how to be respectful towards our home environment to be respectful at home. There are um, a book called the Tai Shang Gan Yin Pian uh, uh, Chronicles. I mean treaties on uh, treaties on response and retributions. Um, uh, given by uh, one of the Taoist sage, Taoist sage. Um, well, the people say it might be Lao Tzu, uh, Lao Tzu's uh, manifestation. But the point is, it teaches on cause and effect, uh, Taoist way. But it's, it's still the same law. So uh, in there, there are a lot of um, mention of gods, but they are usually used as a device to talk about the importance of being aware of the law of cause and effect because it affects everyone else in everyday life um, beyond this lifetime as well. Otherwise, there's so many incidents you cannot explain using whatever tools you have. Well, now we use science, but it's still unexplainable. Uh, you know, a lot of things happen to you. Why this happens? You cannot use physical or one dimension understanding. Now they have explored multi-dimension. Then we understand. Oh, okay. This, you know, Einstein say the time and space are to be broken. I have to use this because in modern people's mind, if we use that kind of um, ancient times and say be fearful and be be respectful of God, now that it would be not effective. Let's face it. In a white white community. Uh, you can talk about our small community, which is still there, but in the wider community, it's best to use science and bring it back to this topic of uh, cause and effect as the main purpose of our discussion. Not if there is a God, if there's not. But if, even if there is, the point is proven by time and space. I mean, time is uh, past, present, future. It's just an illusion. It's a attachment that we have towards this kind of flow. Um, we're bound by this until we are not. Now we are. I can't explain it, but I'm just going to say that I like that. Uh, space is, you know, we say Earth is big, but Earth is nothing in the universe. Not even a dust. Well, in Sun is big, Sun is nothing in compared to the stars. Buddha has mentioned a lot of that sutra, in the sutra, about the scale of the world, the galaxies, galaxies of galaxies. Billions and billions of it. So space is also relative. So time space, well, thanks to Einstein, we have breakthrough on this part. The reason why I bring this is because those things we call goals and, goals and hell and heavens, they are just different dimension, different space, different form of existence. Just because we're stuck in this 3D world doesn't mean that we cannot um, have a little bit of space to understand there might be an existence of other dimensions of beings and it's a very popular topic use obviously they call sci-fi because we have no means to do it using these tools that we have available 
but um, the whole point is that we need to know that no matter what dimension you are, whether you are ants, whether you are a bacteria or a human being or God or like a Nordic God or the Christian God or whatever, or even a Buddha, we are all must follow the law of karma. The karma is like the law that pre prevails in everywhere, every place. Uh, for us, we call Buddha because this person knows a lot, not a lot, everything that is to know about the universe and the universe of many dimensions and everything. Uh, in modern terms, we can use Doctor Strange from the Marvel story to describe, but it's beyond that. The point is the person who is fully awakened to the reality of the universe, to our life, to our in terms of time, what happened in the past, not just this life, in the past life past existence or whatever we call it, the spirit memories um, and future future memories, future existence. It's very important. I need to emphasize on this point because a lot of people might be driving away, might hear the word kitchen god and immediately assume that some people are burning incense on the roadside trying to pray for blessings. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially right now, we all got COVID myself included, nothing wrong with praying for blessings and peace. Um, no one wants to get sick, no one wants to get uh, fallen with illness, with disasters, right? Everyone wants to get fortunes, happiness, no matter what era you are, no matter how highly developed your technology, no matter how, uh, whether you believe or be not believe in God or an entity. This is a core wishes transcendence across all beliefs, all races, all form of existence. So now we are here because of that, not because of the metaphysical question, but I'm getting that out of the way. Now, going back to this, Mr. Yu has met someone from a different dimension called Kitchen God back then, okay? So once he met, uh, this is the whole story about this man who has been an ordinary Chinese back in Ming Dynasty, 1500 to 1600. He lives in the era, he's a real person, he's recorded, he has, he has a mark in the history, not a big one, but very important. Obviously, this book is his iconic work, and this should be read along with Liao Fan. Liao Fan is the one who has bigger mark, more famous, because he was born during Jia Jing. Why I stretch so far? Because it's all related, since we've already been to Liao Fan quite a bit of time. And now we are in Yu Jingong second time. I would like to indulge a little bit on the side dish to make the main dish more appealing. So this main dish, we call it Yu Jingong, uh, this main material, is related to Liao Fan's uh, material of changing destiny. Liao Fan is born in an even more dramatic time in Ming Dynasty, where um, the, one of the fifth son of the founder Zhu Yuanzhang, uh, Emperor Zhu, all right, Yuanzhang is his given name. He's fifth son or fourth son for God. And obviously, this is about a court battle uh, between sons to get the throne. Obviously, the elder son is the most capable among all the Jews' family. So, this Mr. Zhu has founded a dynasty, has born a lot of sons, tens, 17, I don't know how much, it's double digit. <clears throat> and so what happened is his elder son actually has the most capable and been through with his father in the early days when his father was still a low wee peasant. And when he become a emperor, his elder son already um, helped his father build a lot of foundation for the empire, open up the borders, fight against the opponents, conquering the regions, overthrow the Mongolian, the Yuan dynasty. So when he father has sat on the throne, he, everyone, including the brothers, younger brothers, all younger brothers, respect, actually respected this eldest, eldest, uh, uh, this uh, elder brother, the big brother, number one, because he has, he has the capability to be the next in line. However, he died before that happened. Prematurely, his father obviously devastated and all his brothers obviously uh, has no target of fear or target of reverence anymore in terms of successor. Uh, however, this traditional family passed down to next generation, third generation. So the son, the, the first grandson of the founder Emperor Zhu, uh, 
uh, Zhou, uh, Emperor of Ming, Zhu uh, Wen, Zhu Yu Wen, he has inherited the throne. However, he has planned to overtake to take away the fifth. It's a little bit <coughs> Europe, but mostly it's central power against the power of the region. So he's trying to take over the power from his uncles. Uh, but his head, his his method is too extreme, forcing a lot of. I'm talking about real history, so to give you a bit more groundedness to what Liao Fan's ancestor has to face. It's actually his grandfather. <clears throat> so what happened is, um, this grandson of the founder of Ming Empire, Ming Dynasty, has been too cruel towards his uncle, literally just forcing them to give up all their fiefs. Or their possession properties to you know consolidate the central power instead of what the Han dynasty did they being very elegant being elegant in enforcing the uncles to give up the power without killing them giving them a lot of money instead of killing them off but he has done or the opposite he did too much there's also a karma in a sense so ends up a lot of people rise up in rebellion. And one among the rebellious uncle against this um, crown prince, uh, this emperor, the new emperor, yeah, nephew, is uh, Zhu Zhu Di. It's actually an English name, Judy. Sounds like Judy. Julie. Uh, this guy is the guy that, if if, if I'm as a Malaysian, we would know him a lot. He's the guy that sends Zheng He into the Malaya and explore the fleet all the way to the horns of Africa. He's the guy. He's a very well achieved man, but because of power struggle, as you can see in a lot of Imperial court, there's a lot of blood split. And this is one of the blood that was split. He has raised up in rebellion. He has a very two sons. The second sons are very um, proud in battle, but without um, any uh, sort of a uh, marking of an emperor that means able to hold temperament able to you know take care of the big situation he just rushed forward in battle ferociously very good a uh, good general material but not not an emperor the first one is very smart very um calm collected but he has one problem because the heavens is always give you some ticks up there's always plus and minus um so the first son is very powerful I'm oh, sorry he's very smart collected but he has obesity <laughs> literally he born with that he's not he don't just eat himself to obesity and he always have a lot of sickness so his lifespan is not that long but he has been the store how to say when God for his father will his father go out and conquer the territory back from his uncle uh, from his nephew <laughs> He has been holding up the backward. Anyway, the point is, when he took over the throne, there is a person called Fang Xiaogu. Actually, when you watch Liao Fan's television, they won't give you that much because I got this in sources from other uh, historical and drama stuff. And they are all history. And this Fang Xiaogu is very loyal. It's a traditional Confucius. That follows, you know, the direct line from the founder. They don't want, you know, some uncles to take over. They, even though they're all Zhu family surname Zhu, which is the main founder, but they want to follow the direct line. So he has a very traditional Confucius idea of, you know, I die when my emperor is dying. So when he was disposed, this nephew was disposed. This uh, fourth uncle, I think, took over the throne. Um, he literally just stand there and defy. His authority, and this uh, Ju Judy Judy uh, Judy yeah Judy, <laughs> just call him Judy. He a lot of Chinese laugh at him and like his name is literally very Western. So Judy, okay, this Emperor Ju Di, so Ju is the surname, Di is the name uh, of his uh, given. So this Judy has um, asked all these Confucius scholar who are actually civilian officials in the Ming Dynasty. Remember, China was always ruled by the civilian more than there's very few juntas, like pure military dictatorship. It doesn't happen like that. No matter how strong it is, if you are the head of the leader of the military, you will transform yourself as a 
head of the uh, civilian administration. It's always been like that. So it doesn't develop the same as Japan, where Shogun, the Jiangjun general, is actually the head of the of the government. It doesn't happen like that. Even the Shogun must become the emperor. So in China, it's like that. So the point now is this whole bureaucratic system are important to rule China. And Fang is one of the most respected because he is well cultivated. He's a proper Confucian. He is also very well learned. And he's the teacher of Ma, uh, uh, Liao Fan's teacher. He's the teacher of Liao Fan's grandparents, I think. Teacher or colleague, elder colleague. Anyway, this is kind of a teacher. So this Fang defies this, second, uh, this emperor that disposed the throne. And this um, Fang obviously is no as a person, he has emotions and angry. He said, um, the, the, the emperor said, I will have to, you know, take over, I mean, lock the head of your nine generations, your zu jiu zu. And then he's like, no. And he was angry, say, why not 10 generations? Why not the 10th relationship? So the ninth relationship is like all your great, 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 first removed, third removed cousins. And then the 10th one is your friends and teachers. So being a student or a, a colleague, I forgot the relationship. The Yuan family is part of the family or uh, part of the friends, close friends to the Fang's um, pe uh, family. And being a friend or teacher's status, teacher student status, they got they got the same treatment. Basically, it's a very messy, dark backdrop that I'm trying to show you. It's um. It is true. It's bloody. And why these sages have to talk all these teachings? Because they have experienced this. Or they have, and family has experienced this. And they get out of it and get this experience written down. It's a very mature writing text. It's not someone sitting in a, in a, in a school and trying to, you know, trying to hope for a bright future like a utopian. It does not come out like that. It, it, it's all because there's a lot of blood history behind it, they write this to tell us what is happening, what is actually cause and effect. So back to Liao Fan. So Liao Fan's, that is why Liao Fan's father does not want him to be an official in Ming Dynasty. Right? Get it? The story is complete now. Because of his grandfather's generation being related to someone high official in the center, in the court and related because just because of that um, argument bickering, and he dragged along all his friends and his teachers' uh, family along into a role of being uh, in the list of execution. So he, he, he his father do not want his son to step back into that um, kind of a bloody career again. However, obviously during Liao Fan's time, the son of this very capable but cruel leader, Judy, is a very kind person, actually. See, it's, it's like, just because the father is cruel doesn't mean the son has to be. The son is actually waiting for his father to pass away, get onto the throne, immediately announce, I will now release, I mean, I will now, like, rectify the name of Mr. Fang, and all his friends that was wrongly killed by my father. Ping um, Fang in Chinese. It's always happening. Like Yue Fei. Okay, so the reason I say so long is um, back in Liao Fan's time, it's already normalized. Everyone's back to normal. So this very good emperor, even though he only lived 10 years um, after taking over his despotic father, he has done such a big contribution to the whole empire in China to stabilize the whole thing that gives what Liao Fan has now. Like what Liao Fan, when he become a court official, is already a very normal relationship, less chaotic. So Liao Fan is like that in his background and reason why he only, his mom tell him to learn doctor, to be a doctor, don't be a government official. Because look at your grandfathers and great grandfathers, they all get locked off. Their family is the one that escaped at the in the middle of this chaos, helping by their friends to write I think I heard it, write on the um, bamboo 
bamboo raft or something to run away far far away from this from the Nanjing or Beijing. I think it's still Nanjing back then. Wait, Zhu Yuanzhang now is Beijing. Yes, run away from Beijing. So so right now, uh, Liao Fan uh, story begins in this environment. Okay, back to Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu is a bit earlier than Liao Fan. Obviously, he uh, might have seen this, but obviously, it's not related to the Fang family. That means he's not related to the, so he's not affected by the execution. Uh, as a normal people, that's the best you can hope for. So, back to the main character, Mr. Yu. <clears throat> he born in Jiajing. Um, we already mentioned about his name. He has a nickname. He has give birth name, he also has a title that you actually call him respectfully. And he's very smart, 18 years old, he become, uh, you know, passed the preliminary exams. <clears throat> and then his mark is always good, A plus. A plus student. And he has, uh, because of his smartness, he has taken the path of a teacher. To start to accept a lot of students, form a society, a student club, something like that. Um, Wen Chang Se, Wen Chang is the god of exam in ancient China, and always blessed every time you want to pass the exam, go to the Wen Chang Temple and pray for his, uh, pray for his blessing. It doesn't happen in my like Malaysian Chinese background, but I heard in Taiwan or the one closer to the mainland. Obviously, mainland does not happen that much anymore. But the one they passed down, they passed down to Ch uh, Taiwan. And a lot of them also pray to the Wenchang Temple. They have Wenchang Temple next to schools. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> the point is, just to be, um, it's a cultural thing. Uh, you teach a lot. He, 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 he has uh, asked everyone, promote it, to take care of the paper, um, let go of the living beings, prevent the killing, sexual misconduct, and lying, uh, and uh, the five precepts, basically, the Buddhist, Buddhist precepts. Um, however, because of his kindness, I mean, even though he did all the good things, um, he did not pass his exam. Five children, he passed, I mean, five sons, Four has passed away. Uh, the third one is smart and have a lot of have a mark of birth at the left and right leg. I mean left bottom left leg. They have a they have a mark of birth. Uh, they're very really precious to the you know Mister Yu's uh, himself and his wife. But they, he also got and afterwards they have four four daughter. Only one survived. So they only have one children. Two children survived. A pair of son and daughter, but the son is gone as well. So it's a it's a terrible life they have. The wife has cried until she lost her eyesight. So that's a very short um, summary of his life. First forty years, smart, has a sign of being, um, as a sign of you know able to achieve greatness. Basically, can go into the imperial examination and become high officials, but terrible. Right? Happens, uh, um, terrible things happens to him. Even though he uh, alleged, I mean, apparently he did a lot of good deeds, but uh, a lot of trouble befallen him, and he's poor as well, obviously. So at the forty years, his forty years, uh, he started to talk to the gods in the form of writing the paper burn to the heavens, um, and he has done that many years, but without any response. Obviously, in there he say, "Please grant me, um, you know, well, uh, safety for my fa uh, return for my children." And obviously, he asks for all these things that he lacks, or uh, you know, and it's, it's like, it seems reasonable given that he's a good person. He has been doing all these good deeds. At the age of forty-seven, seven years, he's been doing that. Um, nothing happened. Same thing. Poor. Only one daughter, one missing son, uh, and then a, a wife has a blind condition because of too much uh, sadness, crying. 
So his whole family scenario is just miserable. It's, this is one word to describe miserable. And then after after that, he has on that night before the Chinese New Year, he heard a knock. Uh, the um, Mr. Yu has taken the um, candle and opened up the door. There is a very uh, celestial looking man. Looks like one of those, you know, well learned and even like non-ordinary look. Uh, people outside from the society, out of the society, not part of the society, you know, but very well learned. And obviously he has a sense of respect to this person. Invite him to sit down and ask his name. He's Jiang, Zhang, he's Zhang, right? His surname is Zhang. Came from afar, heard that your family has issues. I heard he heard his family has issues. So he came here to say, to um, consult him and his family. <laughs> so Mr. Yu has um, seen that this person is not ordinary. Uh, it's not a normal people. So he has been very respectful towards him in all his demeanors, all his gestures and all that. Invite him to sit down and have a tea. So he um, talked about his life. I've been a good man. I've been a good man, basically. I've been uh, cultivating. I've been helping a lot of people. I've been saying that do not waste paper. Si uh, zi. Let go of the sentience. Uh, let go of the capture being function. Uh, do not take five precepts. No killing, no uh, stealing, no sexual misconduct, no uh, lying, slandering, you know, all this. I'm a good boy, basically. I'm a good man. Um, but nothing happened. Heaven does not repay me. I have no uh, achievements in my uh, exam, imperial exam, that means no job, unemployed. And my wife is blind, my son is missing. My financial is a mess. Uh, and I've been burning letters. Well, burning letters in this sense is burning a piece of paper, talk to the heavens. There's no postman to literally deliver it. So. <laughs> So this is how it works in ancient times, all the time. Uh, so I would like <coughs> the, he, 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 he would like to read what he has been burning to the heavens, to Mr. Zhang. However, you can think about it, Wei Zhang Songzi, like he has been writing this seven years. You can imagine he actually written the same thing for seven years. And my, I mean, as you can, mention like how much more he can write right other than this condition his wife's condition his missing children his own condition stuff like that so mr Zhang said don't need i already know what happened to you you don't need you don't have to tell me i have seen your mind it's too bad so your mind is full of unwholesome things um that means you're not pure at heart why? Because you only go for the name, not for the goodness. You don't actually do good for the, you know, for, for to actually, you don't actually do good from the heart. You do it for the name. Your paper is full of complaints against the heavens, complaints against the people. It's not even sincere repentance or anything. As you can already mention, the way he described, like, I've been good, you know, I have been, I've done all this. Why is it not happening? Why is it not a good thing happening to me? So your paper is actually a insult to the heavens. So holy moly. Uh, I think that your punishment is not going to stop. Or the extent of your punishment is not here. It will go further. So he was shocked, Mr. Mr. You were shocked. I heard that people, I heard many, um, you know, teachings that there are recordings of what you're doing in, 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 in the spiritual world, of what you do in this living world. Um, every single good will be recorded, right? So I have been doing all the good deeds, trying to follow carefully to the laws, to the teachings, 
for a long time, since I was young, 18 years old, until 40. How can it be fake? Mr. Zhang say, uh, yes, yes, you have to talk about uh, being careful of the paper. We all know. And we know that um, your students and all your friends, uh, they all use the paper right? because you're leading this society of Wen Chang. I mean, he's a leader, but he allows this behavior of <coughs> himself as well um, to use this old paper instead of reusing it to write some good books or purposeful promotion of, you know, like, like what Master Ching Kong but teachings of the sages, he used that to wipe the table. So, you know, it's quite contradictory. Um, and <clears throat> And then you used to, and then after you wipe the table, you say that, ah, oh, I don't want to uh, uh, you, um, taint the paper. You already tainted, but you say, I, uh, he didn't want to taint the paper, so let's burn it. It's just contradictory. And basically, when one person doing a very contradictory stuff, their mind is not with, aligned with their action. So that's, that's when we all need to repent and start to repent in a sense. It's like review what happens. What goes wrong? What should I do to make it better? If you want to make it more uh, reasonable, logical understanding, it's just kind of like every time you have a checkup on your car, every six months. Every six months, you want to make sure your car works well, the oil, the black oil is not running out of, uh, you know, it's not too bad. Otherwise, you know, it will not work. The air condition uh, works well, the engine and all this stuff. Like us as well, if our action is out of bound, like you have seen that something's wrong or things are not going well for you, or a lot of um, ridiculous things happening to you, or you've been, like, like for us, we have been learning this. I'm pretty sure we have a bit of self-awareness. Like sometimes I lash out at my friends, families without reason. Or sometimes I get too agitated and I act over the top. That means something's wrong with us. That means it's time to check up. The whole point of check up, one of them is called repentance. Basically, you sit down and just repent of what you did wrong. Try to try to recall every wrong you did, and then and then list them up properly. And then just repent it in front of a sage, a teacher, a Buddha, so that you will not do it again. He keeps going on with what. Mr. Yu has um, gone through. Uh, I mean, what he has done is not the same as he, his words. So he did not practice what he preached. So you talk about letting go of living beings, but you just follow what? The whole group. You just follow the team. You just follow the, the waves. You don't actually do it because you truly, genuinely believe in uh, saving lives. You know, you do it when people are there. Um, if someone not stu not doing it, you don't care. You don't actually do it anymore. Your actual compassion does not came out from there. So you don't do it out of compassion. You do it out of you just do it for to fix to mix in with the team, you know, for social reasons. So beyond that, look at your own fridge. Oh, they don't have fridge. Sorry. Look at your own dishes at your home. Well, in modern times, even more obvious. Look at the fridge. How many chickens, prawns? Well, he talked to him, say you have a lot of um, seafoods, like prawns and uh, crabs, you know, those crustaceans. Look at your uh, the diet. There's a lot of crustaceans in there. Um, they are, none of them were safe from your kitchen. I think... Apparently, he actually did it by himself. It should by himself. So you're under your life. And they're supposed to be released as well. Um, so, as you can see, contradictory came out. So the whole point is talk about contradictory. So about his mouth, you speak, you have an eloquent way of speaking. That means he's smart. 
person. Always able to over debate, over talk. You always, you always can talk over other people where until they cannot rebuke. Uh, you always, when you say something, you know it's wrong. You know it's hurtful. You know it's unnecessary. Uh, but because uh, you're with close friends, you can talk freely, right? So off you go with all these hurtful words in the guise of sarcasm, in the guise of um, in the guise of jokes. Make it very uh, like it's nothing. But you hide you, your word actually hurts people or pressures. I mean, hit uh, straight to the people's heart, and you cannot stop. So remember, every time the word you have given out, if, <laughs> if your word is too sharp, you actually anger the ghosts in heaven, basically the examiners. The people record, and this will be recorded in the books of good and evil, the books of deeds. Um, so, if you do not know about this, and you still promote yourself as one of those people who are being very kind, very generous, very well, uh, like good-hearted, who are you lying to? Lying to heavens? So, it's quite serious. Um, Obviously, that's mine as well. So the action, the speech, and the thought. And the um, spacing is perfect. It actually gives you that. So you eat, you know, the Buddha say you have to clean your action, your thoughts, and your speech. So the last one is thoughts. <laughs> Sexual misconduct, you have not actually committed, but you already have thought of it. Every time you see some beautiful woman, uh, from other people's household, you always look at it for a long, long time, and your heart already sway like a butterfly. Uh, you cannot get it back. Oh well. And the reason you're not doing it because you can't. There's no chance for you to do it. So you have to think about, like, if if you encounter this situation, you need to. Envision this person called Lu uh, He always have the ability to withstand the temptations of lust. Basically, he did not allow this thought to develop. If you can do that, you can face the heaven and earth without any uh, like with conscience, full clean conscience. So uh, this is a true man. Okay, this is a true gentleman. It applies to both genders, obviously. It, this is a true person with clean conscience. Do not get, um, do not get uh, swayed by the lust. Obviously, in modern times, it's not just the same. It's not the opposite gender, even the same gender. It happens everywhere. Um, so it, it's a, it's a manifestation of how the world has. One person might, one perspective would say, oh, it's more liberal and open, you know, we can express ourselves. But we all know, you know, this this whole thing about AIDS coming out, AIDS, AIDS, HIVs, all these diseases are manifestation of the um, overindulgence in lust. I'm not saying that lust uh, is not allowed or anything because this is the reason. I mean, we're talking about the human realm. We're not thinking about Buddha's level or those who want to be a monk or a girl or six bit. Talking about normal human conditions. Mm -hmm. What Confucius called is mm -hmm. Like, this is the observation. Food and lust. Those are the biggest thing that ties human to this world or the biggest needs of the humans. And that's why you have this reproduction uh, system coming up. But the thing is, obviously, I'm not going to be one of those textbook persons and say, yeah, it's only for reproduction reasons. But you have to do it within reasons. There's a reason why all religions talk about no sexual misconduct. So the proper sexual conduct is done between proper husband and wife, a sworn in husband and wife. I believe Christians would believe with, uh, understand this with me. I believe that Muslim would know this, understand this with me, two major religions. 
um, Buddha too, uh, in his time, always talk about the importance of non-sexual misconduct because you don't want to find a partner that are committing sexual misconduct, right? You want a, you want someone who treats you with one heart, right? Then do the same treat uh, the other one with one heart. Or so before you met them, um, you need to have that mindset. Say, I do not need to. Uh, I do not uh, feast my eyes, or I mean, with other people's uh, body and stuff like that. So I want to keep it clean and clear. Uh, this one, Christian has a lot of saying, uh, and I agree. If you are not planning to be a monk, just a normal person, then yes, you need to preserve the the best for your own loved ones, not the not some. In Chinese, 野花, 路边的野花不要采. Do not pick the wildflowers on the roadside. You don't know what they bring. Keep the best, keep the most intimate to your own uh, husband or wife, your, your your loved ones. And to get that loved one, obviously, can't be that easy. Obviously, some people have uh, fate. In Buddhism, we call it many life, they've been husband and wife. My parents is one of them. They just met in uni and done. They already become husband and wife. But some people had it hard. Like they really can't find it or something. Then we need to cultivate um, this virtue. This virtue is good because it will prevent you from meeting someone who are, or prevents you from going further with someone who are severely sexual misconduct. If you have done that before, um, like as you have seen, a lot of people has done abortion. In Chinese, when I write a lot of this Pai Wei, the plague, in Buddhist, there's a lot of sui yingling. What does it mean? Well, the spirits of the babies that was aborted. A lot of them. And there's even a special section. You understand? Like in the San Sicilian, there's a special section set up for this aborted babies. Basically, abortion is basically killing your own children. And uh, we are a Buddhist society. We are, even we are not, we are Buddhist society. We are also talking about Confucius teaching. None of this supports abortion. Strongly, without. People can say oh, a lot of other reasons. Uh, what if there are these effects and other things? I'm just going to talk about, because this, this is on our own terms, or term, karmic terms. The reason why one person have these children who are defected is because of the karmic debt you have to pay. So paying the karmic debt is essential for you to get proper happiness in the end. If your debt is not, all debt must be paid. If the debt is not paid, this debt will get heavier with interest. This sounds right, right? Financially, finance, this is how it works. If you don't pay the debt, bankrupt. And what happens in bankrupt? You cannot borrow any more money in the future. Yes, you may not need to pay back, but in future you want to do something bigger, you can't. The credit history is triple zero. I mean, triple black. No one wants to borrow money to you. You can't even buy a house. So, in these karmic terms, you pay the debt. Yes, the children might be hard to take care. It may even torture you every single night and day. But as long as you have that love to your own, your own bond, you know, it's not talking about someone else's children thrown to you. Your own children coming out of you with this defect but you still care with love and care. Even though 20 years, 30 years, it's hard, it's almost driving you crazy. Trust me, like this thing will be repaid. If this is repaid, good life happens after, just like Mr. Yu. So this is this, are, this perspective needs to be carried out in the forum where it's friendly towards this. Some people already think only on medical terms, only on the shallow terms. I'm not talking about it's wrong, Yes, it's the fact and all that. It's just what you can see. What you cannot see is the whole chain of causation, the, in, the events that lead up to this formation of uh, deformed children. First is medical, yes. Genome, the, the XY sequence have some issues. I'm talking about some medical stuff, yes. But the actual cause of it, why is someone else, like why is the... Many babies' chromosomes are so normal. They have XY combination properly. Why is these babies have an extra chromosome or one less chromosome? Basically, DNA. Uh, not, not right. You can talk as high, high, high medical terms. 
but it does not uh, it does not escape from cause and effect cause and effect leads to this right people say by chance yes why among 1000 people only one of you gets this why other people doesn't have because they don't have to come you have to come they don't have the debt you have the debt understanding this makes the life much more fair in the long run it's not easier it's not easy to go down it does not make everything happy go lucky but it makes sense and if things start to make sense then you can start to know how to get out of it and you start to know how to get out of it then your life is getting better obviously no i don't dare to say you become buddha or become a sage of the three realms of some that was a big big aspiration go even with pure land matter we still have a lot of work to do and still not guaranteed until you actually can achieve the some uh, samadhi the chanting meditative tranquility therefore some need. but the point is the foundation is always the karma understanding the law of karma making it universal making it un level like common sense level like science common sense will only help this world to better and this is what mr yu has said he has passed he has like what supposed to have seven children under him and he only has two left that's a karmic repercussion raw and bloody in front of him and and that's why i'm saying that all this his thing were written with bloods written with a lot of tw- tears uh, of the real person just to uh, just to tell you that you know if it happened to you i can't say it doesn't happen to you or to me but if it happened to you after the emotional phase this is what you should think about how to get out of it so sexual misconduct has such a power it's hard for me as well because i do like pretty woman but what i'm saying is um if you want someone who truly one like like a right person for you not someone who will betray you or someone who will um always jump from one person to another for the fun of it it is fun for five seconds and then pain for f- five lives or something and then then be the right person yourself buddha has mentioned the karma of sexual misconduct as qi bu zhen liang your your wife or your husband will not be loyal or your daughter will be humiliated by other person might not be direct like bad things like rape or something but it might be something like they have married into a family or your son mar- marry someone who is causing a lot of headaches yi ku er nao san shang diao okay chinese is saying cry first they cry second they yell for no reason and then number three they will try to threaten you with their own lives say if you don't care for me i'll die or something like that. basically making your life a miserable a pain there's a lot of case like like the recent case i think in us very famous johnny depp with his uh, uh wife uh, amber heard i think it's hollywood stuff but still it's a very abusive wife to a team and i i don't know the actual case but what i'm saying is this is raw things that happen uh, a very loving beginning but ends up with like an enemy so these are all in buddhist term it are all like either is paying the debt or you either they pay you the debt or you pay them the debt fu qi shi yuan er ni shi zai uh you yuan zhe ju you zai bu lai some way that if 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 your children does not have that connection with you they will not come otherwise what would you spend all your savings to raise them up give them money to college and they will worry about their if the whether they marry or not still give them dowry or something like that. right it's, it's, it's cause and effect and your whole husband and wife if there is no affinity by whether good or bad you will not be husband and wife if it's just a normal one you will just be a friend a very normal friend if you be husband and wife better be a good affinity than bad if it's a bad affinity change it to good if it's good affinity change it to dharma never up dharma means like you and guan yin guan yin and like bodhisattva guan yin and bodhisattva di zhang all these are they are love big love there are always room to improve basically 
Like the best one is Buddha and Buddha, like Shyamuni Buddha and Amitabha. Oh, you have no idea. They have no jealousy, no hatred. They were like, oh, you have good place. Everyone go to his place. So that's what Shyamuni did in his sutra. Go, go to Amitabha's pure land. All Buddhas like, go to his pure land. I don't need to, I don't have to teach so much. Everyone just bring the most difficult student to Amitabha's. This is the kind of relationship we want. Free, open, but full of love and loyalty as well. So <clears throat> back to this sexual misconduct, because this is the most uh, intimate and most uh, grasping the heart of many people. Uh, so I think this is very good to revise and stretch. I, the reason I can talk so much is <laughs> because I realize first thing I have to a lot of these issues um, as well. And then also I listen to a lot. So I'm just going to share what I have. Basically, he's just saying that all you did is not, none of them is good. All of them is bad. Like, there's no one ounce of goodness that I can give it to you. That means there's no one ounce of merit you can exchange as a form of fortune to you. That's why we can't, because you have none. So, especially when you live by yourself, as in stay in your own personal room, or by, if you're by yourself, your thoughts of greed, lust, jealousy, um, agitation, arrogance, uh, which is um, like, like you mentioned about past, present, like always think about past, always think about future, but never do anything in the present. I uh, always hope the, a good future, but where, where did it start? Now, uh, nothing is done now, then the good future is always a dream, utopia. Past is already a past understanding what goes wrong and move on. If not, then you stay there and get either grieved or get angry. And, or even your good achievement in the past is also something like, yes, it was in the past, you were good. But like him, he has high marks and all that. But there was when he was 18, now he's 47 and look at his life. It's, just, it's not the same. Buddha already talked to, Buddha has a story, Jayamuni Buddha, the story of him, talking to one of the Brahmin, I think, by the rivers, talk to him. I think he forgot. He said, like, can I um, stay the same forever? The Buddha tell him, do you think the same thing? Like, look at the river of Ganges and you. So 10 years, uh, when you were 10 years old, this old man is like 16 years old. 10 years, like when you're 10 years old, looking at the river of Ganges, do you think the same thing you think right now when you're looking at the river Ganges of six, when at the age of 60? No. Does the river Ganges change? No. Something like that. Like he talks about people change. Uh, people always constantly change in permanence. So always remember that. Cultivate earnestly. Do not give up. Do not waste your time. Also, you always think about revenge. Yeah. Uh, who does not treat me well? I'm going to give him a lesson, something like that. And that thing is terrible, trust me. It's like drinking a poison. <laughs> a slow poison that will come back to you 10 years later. Don't, don't do that to you. Stop. Let it go. If you were angry at that moment, afterwards just let it go. This is not a pure land. This, I mean, this is not a pure land for us. For Buddha, everywhere is pure land. But for us, this is not a pure land. So, you kind of you can't expect every single person to be ready to reach the seat. You can't expect everyone to be a sage. We can't even do that. How can you expect others? So, understand this is the nature of the world. It's a lot of cruelty, sufferings, because a lot of unwholesome karma created. You already know the big framework of it. I know that a lot of calamity, including my sickness, is because of my uh, inability to self-discipline, to control myself. Uh, or pursue of um, pleasures and all that, uh, get sick by weakening my immune system. How A person with a righteous heart, a person with a righteous heart, well regulated life, uh, but their heart is in the right place, full of love and compassion, they will not be attacked by the sickness. Or even if they do, they will heal very quickly. So always make use of these calamities as the opportunity to transform yourself. And this calamity becomes your blessing in disguise. That's the whole point 
of layer five of Mr. Yu's lessons. Because we repeat the second time, we need to get deeper understanding of it. What's the whole point of this? It's not to tell you to sunk in the past or, or hoping for a future that will never come. It's to understand what happens now, what you could do now, what you can see now, uh, what you can make it better now. And if you can't, out of your power, seek help. Um, seek help from the teachings of the master. Sometimes seek help from your partners, your friends, someone who you can trust. But always remember, you have to be willing to accept um, changes to yourself. You have the good eye, you have the cut. Something you love uh, away. Something like, um, are you, like, if I really, 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 really like my game and stuff, I need to let go of it. If I'm sick, I need to, I need to rest. Help for game. Think about it. See, this is how bad I am in both. Those are, those are trivial, but it's not. It's, really, it's, it's a lot of uh, violence, sexual misconduct, uh, a lot of um, lying, stuff like that happening in there. Obviously, there are beautiful stuff in there as well, but what I'm saying is, Everyone has their own weakness and habits. Just just remember, like, while you're still breathing and you encounter these issues, use it as a way to learn. Maybe I can live differently. Maybe I can live a more uh, better life, a more meaningful life, like this session. Or I can make it better, make it more, um, more, 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 uh, say more dedicated to do more, maybe go to a kitchen and help once I'm done with those homeless. Try to find a way to, you know, make your life shine, not just for your family, your friends, your siblings, but others. Um, but this also taught us to be accord with the condition. Sui yuan, bian, sui yuan miao yong. Chinese sui yuan, yi wang xi lai ma. People who are not in a court with the condition presented them will be trapped in the past will be trapped in the past will never be able to move on to the future because they will recreate the condition that they are suffering from right now be a court with the condition does not mean you become one of those people that follows the group without thinking or allowing yourself to commit uh, terrible things just because everyone is doing so. It's to be wise, to understand what can be done at the moment, what cannot be done. And if it does, like Master Ching has a standard, if it does not cause major disruption to the people, the society, or to the people who are being affected by this action, then you should be accord with what their habit, their temperament, their preferences. In a court means you're able to let go of your self uh, delusions, your attachment to yourself. Um, no longer be so stingy, stingy or so entrenched in this false delusion that we call self. Um, that is why in a court to the condition is one of the important lessons to be learned before one becomes Buddha. Uh, well, so I will stop here about this thing and stop with this lesson. Um, try to learn about in a corporate condition. A lot of people misunderstand this as one of those um, things that people just, you know, become a yes man. Yes, 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 I agree, I agree. No, when you can do something better than what other people are asking and they are all open for it, then go. But if you can't, and that person has a specific temperament, one needs to be done their way, but it's not hard. Still get things done a bit long, then just be patient. Okay, so we'll end this here. Uh, thank you for thank you for helping. Uh, thank you for this uh, giving me this session to talk a lot. Uh, I think I will I will keep going next next fortnight. Uh, next week we'll continue with a proper um, session in the, the temple if I if I'm well if I'm not well then I'll do it online. So thank you. Let's end this with. Um, do you have anything to say before we end?
any questions or anything you want to bring up? Well, if that's the hope, but we never know because I can't see these. I can't even see mine. It's it's eons of lifetime. It's not like one life, two life. It can be like thousands of life. The fact that we are siblings or the fact that you are a spirit of wives, it already means that you have a share karma in the past. Otherwise, you won't be born as the f same family or being married into the same family. That's a thing. Reason why you have you are what you are in relation to others is because you have that relationship in the past, and this part of the relationship is carried to this life. Otherwise, it won't be your wife, the wife of your husband. Like that. It's it's the part. It's a um. I won't be the sibling of my brothers and sisters because of the past karma bring us together, born in the same family. So all these conditions. So sickness, same thing. Some people got, some people didn't go. Um, I hope it doesn't, but we'll prepare if it is. So, <laughs> what we can do is prepare, right? Like, I can't just open up a data and say, did he did that? Will he get it? I wish I can. <laughs> yeah, we can't Google it. Obviously, the idea is, like Master Chiu can say, always have the heart of, uh, you know, the four words, sorry, Thank you. Uh, I love you. Uh, please forgive me. These four um, very kind words. Uh, talk to yourself. Talk to other people as well. Even you don't want to talk about it, think about it. These are good things to think about. Um, you can use our metaphor, but if we haven't reached that level where we truly have that emptiness, like only one-mindedness of metaphor. These are helping us to gear our mind towards that idea. I would like to uh, end this with a Tenta Amito for and Dedication of Merits. Amito for Amito for Amito for Amito for Amito May the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. So dedicated or married to all Karma creditors and all the COVID viruses and all the uh, victims of all disasters, man made or natural. Um, may the world will be free of the virus, be free of the virus of the heart, which is greed, hatred, ignorance, and also be free of the you know, calamities that, that they made themselves, but they invited because of the deeds, unwholesome deeds. Thank you so much.